Super Manga Chapter 71, The Heater's Plan. As the training continued, Whis asked Goku what is the difference in between angels and him. Goku struggles to answer and says that he doesn't have a halo thinking flying around like Whis does. Whis looks back at Goku as he does not find his answer funny. Then we notice that Whis' death comes at a high speed. Whis dodges, but Goku does not which causes Goku to get smacked on the face by Whis staff. Goku is on the floor in pain as he is whining, but then Whis tells him that the correct answer is that angels are always on the ultra instinct state, while on the other hand, and as Whis is trying to explain Goku, Goku figures it out. He tells Whis that he knows that he got it from far first to use Ultra Instinct, that his body doesn't just dodge stuff on its own, right? Whis tells him that he's wrong because he doesn't have to transform to be able to access the Ultra Instinct. Goku seems clueless. Then Whis continues by telling him that when your heart is calm, your body should move on its own, no matter what form you're in. Then Whis starts manipulating his staff as Goku gets up from his knees. Then Whis shows off his angelical skills with his staff. He tosses the staff around his back as he gives it a special tap, followed by an awesome move that makes Whis look super cool. Goku is there just standing as he's watching his master. Whis hits the staff once again, but this time with his heel, making it look super easy. The staff goes back up in the air as he finally lands right next to him. Goku looks at Whis and he asks him that if this means that he has to figure out a way to use Ultra Instinct in his normal form. Whis says yes. He also says that by doing that, he will no longer have the stamina drain issue that is creating a time limit. Goku admits his weakness as he understands that it's been causing him a lot of troubles lately. Whis tells Goku that he should only transform into Ultra Instinct when the battle demands him to surpass his limits. Goku understands that this will take a lot of discipline and concentration, which is the type of training that he struggles with, and he knows that this will take a long time. Whis says that they may not have much time, as Goku wonders why he says that. Then Whis calls Vegeta. He then tells Vegeta and Goku that while training, the rivals should be themselves from the previous day, to work hard and to grow stronger than their past selves. Vegeta doesn't understand why Whis is saying this. Goku makes it clear and says that that is the plan, we get stronger every day. Vegeta asks Whis very sarcastically if this is supposed to be some sort of nugget of wisdom. Whis responds that he only says that because not long ago something odd happened in this universe. The Saiyans act surprised and they want to know if this has something to do with them. Goku gets excited cause a really strong enemy may show up. Whis tells him that he's not sure whether it's an enemy or not. And very quick, very interesting when we says that not long ago something odd happened in this universe. And I think he refers to when the Saiyans attack planet Serial. And I think that's the real reason behind Whis' statement when he says that they need to be better than their past self. Otherwise, they may be hunted by their past, meaning Granola. Meanwhile, on planet Serial, a ship approaches and it lands on a hill. It is Granola. Oatmeal asks him if they are not going back to the old man's house. Granola says that he can't return until Frieza is defeated, that he's gonna have to wait there for a word from a leg. Oatmeal insists and asks if Monaco will be okay on his own. Granola says that he's fine, as we notice that he is watching Monaco from the distance. 
oatmeal notice the granola's right eye is even stronger now. Meanwhile, Elec is getting his plan in action. He tells Oil and Mackie that before heading to planet Earth, they should pay Suno a visit to get some more intel. And as Mackie and Oil are boarding the ship, Mackie wants to make sure if all they gotta do is ask where the Saiyans are. Alex says yes, that's very important too, but they also need to find out a few other things. Oil says that they know all the questions that they need to ask. Mackie wants to know if they can have other questions of their own. Alex says go nuts, ask whatever you want, as long as you follow the plan. Mackie is super excited as she goes like sweet. Mackie and Oil leaves the heaters based on a nice ship, and as they get further away, Gas asks Alec how will they get the Saiyans where they want them. Alec says that that's a great question for Suno. Everyone has a witness, and whatever theirs is, we probably have the capital to exploit it. Gas asks is all this really necessary just to deal with granola? Alex says he's supposedly the mightiest warrior right now, so yes, just in case. Gas remains silent as Alex goes like, what's wrong, Gas? Gas responds that he wishes he would have let him fight Granola as well. Alex says that he has no doubt on how strong Gas is. He explains Gas that he could have won that fight, but he'd rather wait just in case of a worse scenario. Then Alec continues by telling Gas that his moment to fight has yet to come, that he's the only member of his family who can surpass Frieza himself. Now this statement from Alec is very very disturbing as we already know that Alec knows about the power of Frieza, the power of Goku, the power of Vegeta, the power of Moro and perhaps the angelical power of Mirus. Also it makes us wonder if Gas is the strongest warrior in the universe yet to be born since we know that the oracle fish has not given us confirmation that Granola is such a warrior. Back to the story, Elec tells Gas to relax, he tells him that the wind is blowing their way now. He reflexes on his plan and says that when everything goes down and the dust is settled that the main force in the universe should be the heaters. Meanwhile, on Lord Suno's planet, we notice Maki is furious as she goes, why should I have to kiss you? One of Suno's subordinates says that no questions may be asked without the offering. Oil acts like it's not a big deal, so Mackie tells him that he should be the one to kiss him instead. Then Suno's subordinates let them know that Lord Suno will not be accepting a kiss from another man, as Jackie looks super irritated by the whole situation. She finally agrees, as then she gets closer and it finally happens. <laughs> As Lord Suno cannot believe that he has been kissed by the woman of his dream. On the other hand, Mackie is disgusted. Then Lord Suno continues by telling her that festive women are his type and he shall answer 10 of her questions. Oil makes fun of Mackie and Mackie asks Oil for a Lex notes. She calls Lord Suno a creep and demands him to get with the times. Then she asks Lord Suno if he ever heard of harassment. Lord Suno does not acknowledge the question and looks to the side as he remains silent. <laughs> Funny how Lord Suno knows everything on the universe but he doesn't know about harassment. Meanwhile, on Lord Beerus' planet, Goku continues his training with Whis. And now we see that Goku is dodging all the attacks that Whis is sending with his staff while being on his regular state. 
he stops with staff with a single finger, as then he sends the staff away with a little finger tap. But the staff turns around like a boomerang and intends to counterattack Goku, but Goku notices and jumps, avoiding and dodging the staff's attack. He uses the staff to flip around and then land right on it. Then he looks at Whis as he gives him the thumbs up. Somewhere else on Lord Beerus planet, Vegeta is on the bottom of a waterfall. It seems like he's waiting for something to fall from the top. And when we take a closer look, we notice that there is big lugs that are in fact coming down the waterfall. Vegeta wastes no time and he starts to Hakai all these lugs. And the more he destroys, the more lugs keep showing. But he does not give up as he continues to attack and destroy all the lugs. Then we notice that it is Beerus the one throwing lugs into the river as he intends to train Vegeta while he enjoys his delicious drink. Then Lord Beerus sends Vegeta the biggest lock there is in his planet as Vegeta wastes no time and destroys the whole area, leaving nothing but a scene of destruction. Lord Beerus goes insane and demands Vegeta for all the destruction caused by him. After some time, Oil and Maki knows all the weaknesses of Goku and Vegeta and they have finally arrived on Earth. They go straight to Goku's house and knock on his door. Chi Chi answers and asks if they are friends of Goku. They reply by saying that they never met Goku before but they have a big request for him. Chi Chi tells them that he hasn't been there for months which causes Maki to ask Chi Chi if she can summon Goku for them. As Maki knows that Goku will always answer to Chi Chi thanks to the information that Suno gave her. Back on Beerus' planet, we suddenly gets a call from Bulma. She asks if Vegeta and Goku are there because they have got guests looking for them. Vegeta demands to know who they are. Bulma answers that by the way they look, they seem to be aliens, and they need both of you to be the villain for them. Chi Chi yells at Goku and says that those guys are willing to pay him if he beats that guy. She tells him that training is one thing, but that doesn't pay the bills of the house. Goku says sure thing, and he will be on his way right away, but in the meantime, Vegeta asks more about this enemy. Bulma replied by saying that Maki said he just popped up out of nowhere and now he's the strongest in the universe. Then she continued by saying that it's hard for her to believe that there's another person stronger than Goku and Vegeta. Goku and Vegeta both goes in shock as they go like the strongest in the universe. Goku asks Whis if this guy may be the one the Oracle Fish was talking about. Whis says that that may be the case. Bulma asks if she shall send them away. Vegeta answers no and he's the one that intends to fight. He says that no one can claim that title without his approval. Vegeta tells Goku not to bother cause he's going alone. Goku says no way, we're talking about the strongest fighter in the universe and that gets him pumped up. Bulma says they'll do it. Maki says thank you, cause this will save the lives of so many poor helpless people. Then Maki asks if she can use the restroom, Bulma says yes, go down the hall to the right. As they leave the room, Oil congratulates Maki for such a good work, while Maki asks him why he's not doing anything. Whis offers a quick ride to Earth. Vegeta replies by saying yes please, while on the other hand, Goku is just excited because he hasn't been in a real battle for a minute, and he is confident that with all this training, there's no way nobody can beat him. Beerus is aggravated by Goku, so he calls Vegeta and awards him with the symbol of destruction to let the whole world and the whole universe know that the signature move of the God of Destruction is stronger than the Angel Techniques. 
Vegeta replies by saying very well. Then, Whis does the same with Goku, but meaning the contrary. Beerus' reaction is priceless, as then he gets mad at Whis for throwing down the gauntlet, but then Whis tells him that he believed Lord Beerus did it first. Vegeta tells Beerus to calm down, cause he has no intention of losing to Kakarot. Then he places the symbol on his ear, while Beerus smiles proudly. Then after that, Goku tells Vegeta that he will be eating his own words. Whis tells Goku that the rivalry in between him and Vegeta is all well and good, but the excess of confidence may be his doom. Goku seems surprised and he asks if this guy is that nasty. Whis says that he can say cause the guy just appeared out of nowhere. Then he tells them that he cannot intervene with the affairs of the mortal realm, but he still gives them the warning. Then Whis takes off with the Saiyans leaving the god of destruction behind. Beerus excels as he finally found some peace and quiet time for some decent sleep. The oracle fish watches from afar as he goes like, what? There they go! Not that I care! Meanwhile, on planet Earth, Maki has found the dragon radar. Maki comments that Suno's intel has been useful. She wonders if the Dragon Raider is busted cause nothing is showing, but then she remembers that Suno mentioned that the Dragon Balls of planet Earth go inactive for a whole year. Oil says that Suno mentions that the Dragon Balls from planet Sirius do not turn into stone, meaning that they can use the Dragon Raider to find them right away. Then, Chi Chi tells Maggie and Oil that they better don't come with some fancy space money cause that stuff is useless on planet Earth. Maggie says that that's no problem, that they can always pay Chi Chi with gold. Chi Chi is amazed by the news as she's living super happy. 30 minutes later, Whis arrives with Goku and Vegeta. And quickly after that, Whis returned to his master. Bulma lets the hitters know about the Saiyan's presence. Maki welcomes them with open arms and hopes that they can eliminate their problems. Vegeta wants to know where is this pest that claims to be the strongest of the universe. Maki says that she knows where he is and she can take them there on her ship. Both Shichi and Bulma tell their Saiyan husbands to be careful, they both acknowledge their wives. Then Maki finally reveals to the Saiyans the name of this so-called villain, Granola. As they leave planet Earth, Maki tells them that all the animities on the ship is for them to enjoy. Vegeta says how long will it take to reach this planet. Oil says that it will take 18 days. Goku freaks out as he does not know the situation of the food in the ship. Oil says that they have a gourmet chef that can cook anything they like. Goku gets excited with the treatment. Vegeta notice of all commodities of the ship for a tribe whose planet is being savaged by some great destroyer. Maki says that they prepared this ship because they believe that the Saiyans are their saviors. Vegeta is grateful that he can train, while on the other hand, Goku is grateful that he gets to eat all he can and all he wants. And while Goku eats, Vegeta goes inside of the pool and he begins to train in there. Not knowing that both of them are being watched while being set up by Maki. She is trying to communicate with someone on planet Serial. And that someone is Granola, who was running in patience by the absence of Maki. He asks Maki if she finally has Frieza's location. Maki says yes, but then she tells Granola that two of Frieza's assassins are making for cereal right now. That someone on their squad screwed up, and now they know that Granola is coming for Frieza. Granola sees this as an opportunity, as now he intends to use these so-called members of the Frieza's army to get Frieza's location. Then Maki tells Granola that the two warriors that are looking for him are Saiyans. 
granola reacts to the fact that there is survivors of this race, the very same race that drove their civilians to extinction. Oil and Mackie are celebrating cause everything is going according to plans. Then Granola gets off his ship, he flies up and look to what was once his beautiful home. And after a moment of silence, he realizes the Saiyans are coming back to his home planet and it's 50 years overdue but revenge will finally be his and the Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter 71 has come to an end and I can't wait for the Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter 72 to release. We still do not know who the strongest warrior in Universe 6, we don't know if it's Goku, Vegeta or Granola or maybe Gas or even his brother Elec who confessed and revealed to all of us that Gas has the potential to become stronger than Frieza and of course don't forget about Frieza who's always looking for a chance to get back at the Saiyans. Also, very interesting, the Dragon Balls of Planet Serials, they can be used right away and now Maki has the Dragon Raider from Bulma. And also very important, how do you think Granola is going to react once he confronts the Saiyans? Do you really think Granola has what it takes to kill the Saiyan? Because in my opinion, it really feels like he's not a bad guy. But please let me know what you think by forcing your theory down below the comment section. And very important, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss your latest Dragon Ball Super theories. ああ、もちろんだぞ。またな、全長。<笑>